Your bolt's been delivered. You've set it up, vented it outside, and it's ready to go. You've purchased a number of different materials to test out on the bolt, so they're ready to go. But if you're like me, you've never used a laser before, and you have no idea what settings for engrave or cut you need to use on any of those materials. So you're not ready. But not to worry. Thunder Lasers created a materials list with some very common materials and associated engrave and cut settings for you to try. It's probably the best kept secret. I found it. I'm going to show you where to find it and how to load it to Lightburn. Today on LaserNug. So I just had my first training on the bolt yesterday. The bolt arrived just before Christmas, so I had a couple of weeks to play with it before I had my scheduled training. Shannon from Thunder Laser Canada did an excellent job. It was over a video conference call. I wrote a lot of notes and I learned a lot of things that are going to help me going forward. A little more appreciation for the bolt and what appears to be an endless list of features in Lightburn, as well as combinations when engraving or cutting on the bolt. One of the most helpful pieces of information is Shannon identified that Thunder Laser has created what they call a materials list, specifically for the bolt. And it lists a number of different types of materials and related engrave and cut settings to get you going. You simply download the file, load it into Lightburn, and now you've got some starter settings or at least some basic settings you know will work for all those materials you purchased sitting on my shelf. I'm gonna show you where to find it and I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is to download it to Lightburn and to begin using it. So you wanna jump into the internet and pull up Thunder Laser USA's website. Once you're there, scroll across the top toolbar to Knowledge Base. Click on Knowledge Base and you'll see New User Pathway. It's your first option, click on that. Scroll down the list of further options until you get to Material Libraries. Under this section, you're gonna see some interesting information and you're also gonna see a video which is basically gonna tell you what I'm telling you today for the most part. But continue down the list until you see the Bolt Machine Library. That's the Bolt 30 Watt RF Library. You're going to click on that and this screen is going to come up. You want to download the CLB file to your Mac and once downloaded open up Lightburn, go down to the right corner of the screen, change the right corner from Laser to the Library option. Go down to that right corner, click load, and you'll see it'll open up your files in the Mac. I moved mine to the desktop. You'll see it there, 30 watt bolt, the CLB file. Open it, and now it's that simple. It's in Lightburn, but you wanna make sure you click save in the bottom right hand corner, and now it's there for good. You can see there's a number of different materials, and underneath each of those materials, you'll see engrave and or cut settings. Great, so now we have a library. Why don't we test it out? Let's assume I'm doing a slate coaster again. I'm gonna grab my circle shape, make a big old circle, and you'll see as soon as I've created the shape, Lightburn automatically creates a layer for me. It's a default layer, it's black. I'm gonna grab a little text, and I'm just gonna put test. Click on my selection tool. Let's grab our test and put it in the middle. The test is also a fill layer, but just for fun, let's change that circle to a cut layer. Now it's red. You probably notice now in Lightburn that whenever you highlight any element on your screen, it automatically highlights the layer here to the right, the top right. If I highlight the text, you'll see that the highlight changes between the CO and the CO2 layers. Okay, and let's say I want to use the default library settings for my fill layer. I'm going to come down into my library, I'm going to find slate, open it up, open up engrave. I'm going to click engrave. My fill layer is already highlighted up in the window on the right, so I just have to click assign. Watch what happens to the values. It's literally that easy it's assigned the values from the library. Four hundred speed, twelve percent power, and three seventeen point fifty lines per inch or DPI. 
As you know, I've been working with these slate coasters for a while and I've already tried out these settings. Uh, as you know, I've tried different power and speed combinations as well as different lines per inch. Over the last couple of weeks, I found some settings that I prefer. At least I like the output better. So now that I've got this library here, I don't want to use the settings provided. Here's how simple it is to edit those settings. So I'm going to come back down into the library here on the bottom right. I'm going to highlight engrave under my slate settings. And I'm going to go further right here to edit cut. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to put in my preferred settings that I've used now. It's 350 millimeters, 25 and 25% power. And I prefer 400 lines per inch. I'm going to click OK. Then I can come down to the bottom right and I'm going to click Save. Now it's saved my brand new settings into the library and overridden the previous settings. If I highlight test, you'll see that my fill layer has been highlighted here in the window. Watch what happens to these values when I come down and I click on assign. There we go. And now what that's done is it has taken my settings or my preferred settings and overridden or updated the settings in the library. I'm going to go back in, open up Slate, click on Engrave. I'm going to slide over to the left toolbar, click on the A or the text command and create new text. I'm going to go click on my Select tool and you'll see again that Lightburn has created a default layer. I'm going to go down under Slate, click Engrave click assign and you'll see the settings change to my most recent and preferred settings they're saved in there you can see them there i click ok and it's literally that quick and that simple and as you go forward testing out different types of materials on the bolt you'll find the settings that you prefer overall they may be the same as what you find in the library but where you want to change them a little bit you have a simple and easy way to keep those layers changed in Lightburn so you can easily assign them or apply them to whatever designs you're creating. I'm pretty excited to have found this library. I wanted to thank Shannon at Thunder Laser Canada for a great tutorial yesterday. I now have some confidence in some settings and I no longer have to search over multiple or dozens of YouTube videos trying to find somebody that's attempted to use materials that I have and trying to glean from their settings. I now have a base confident set of settings I can work from. Thanks again for sticking around with me today. I hope you found it informative. If you did, please subscribe, hit the like button, and share it with your friends. Have a wonderful week, and I hope I see you on the next one. Cheers.